Okay, so we we are here sitting here with the illustrious, the illuminating, the incredible, the wondrous Evan Stone, and it's it's been known to me that there's a story now that I don't know <laughs> that I don't that I don't know about him. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me the story. Okay, right, Slaughterhouse, uh, small town in Texas. This is the best job around. Pays the most. So Slaughterhouse. Cows are cut in half, put on hooks, go through a conveyor belt. You make each individual guy makes a cut, meat drops down, conveyor belt, takes the meat away. All right, my cut is uh, inside skirt steak. Half Kaiser's cut, which is on the other side, is the back strap. Back strap, it's a tendon, runs either side of the backbone. When the cow's cut in half, there's two tendons, right? So, uh, Haps has a hook on one hand, a knife on the other. He hooks the side of the beef, spins it around to the backbone, makes a cut on the top, puts his hook inside the back strap, pulls the back strap out, throws the back strap in the auger, which goes down and made it, it's made it a dog food, not for people consumption. My hook, hook, hook in one hand, knife in the other, is to hook the thing, spin it around inside skirt steak, as a flap of steak inside the inside of the ribs. I make my cut, peel off the outside skin, drop it in a bin behind me. So, it's a, it's a mundane, endless job. It's like a 10 hour, it's eight hour day job plus overtime and it's like the same cut. And then there's alarm goes off, everybody goes to the break room, sits down, everybody gets up, goes back. Guy's been working there for years because uh, you're holding a knife and you're making the same cut and you're in a cooler, it's very, very cold. So the, the guys are getting tendonitis in their hands and they're going uh, into surgery and then they're returning into work. These guys have been doing this, you know, 12, 15 years, and they can they cannot even open their hand up all the way. It's like it's like this. They got scars running all the way up and down, right? From just just doing their job, right? But they can't quit. They're taking care of their family and stuff like that. So it's just the same job. So you cut your, you get your hand cut on, you come back to work. And I was like, wow, I'm just gonna be here the rest of my life. This really really sucks. Meanwhile, taking acid, I'm at work. <laughs> so. Uh, I gotta turn the, the those white hats. These are supervisors. They wear a white hat, and their, their coats are always white. There's never any blood on them, right? And they just stand there with their hands in the pocket and they watch everything. Now, if there's a cyst or something like that, the alarm goes off. The alarm goes off. The line's shut down. Which they hate that because uh, it's costing them money every time the line is shut down. A cyst is like something. It's a, it's a, a growth inside the cow that, that needs to be cleaned up. So we have a cyst. It spills. We get the people out there. They clean everything up. They take that thing of meat off. They go clean it up, and the USDA inspector checks it to see if it was back in the line. So, I have my hook and I'm trying to spin it around, uh, uh, but I can't pull it. And I'm looking over here and I see a white hat just kind of looking at me. And I'm like pulling, kind of talking over here and I'm pulling, I can't get this thing over here. Well, my Hat Kaiser has put it, instead of using his hook, he just put his hand on the side of the beef and it was just going to spin it around, right? His meat is a knife hand. So, what I did is I hooked the hand because it's on top of the, the cow and I hooked it, but he's got a glove on, so it didn't go in his hand. So, it's just like the pressure of the, the hook is holding him on the, on the cow. Now, four feet past me, the conveyor line goes up to another section, so it actually raises up eight feet in the air and goes to another thing, which is layered, and then those people have cuts, and they look, climb up the stairs. And so I'm trying to turn it, and this white hat's looking at me, and I go, what the fuck? What the? And finally, it's getting to the point where it's about to go up, and so I better, I better start paying attention to what's going on, right? So I look over here. Me is so loud, right, in this place, really, really, really loud. Clangs, bang, boom, and I can't hear Hap Kaiser, who was like on acid, but then really, really over-exaggerating the pain, going, ah, 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 right? And he's about to be lifted up. <coughs> he's being lifted up off the ground, right? And finally, I turn around and see what's going on. I go, oh, so I release it, right? Hap doesn't know that White Hat's looking at us. Right, and right by him is a USDA station. Uh, so it's a, it's a bottle of dye, which is about this big, which is just alcohol and dye. And then a stamp and a sponge. And he's only there on certain days when we do certain breeds of cattle. So he's not there that day. So he grabs this bottle and he squirts it at my face. And I'm on acid. So all of a sudden I see the stream of blue come at me like this. And it hits me. And then I, all of a sudden I'm in a whole lot of pain. This thing is just like, al it's alcohol. And he hit me in both eyes. So I drop my shit. I'm screaming, ah, ah, ah. And then I hear the alarm. Burr, burr. Line stop. Right? I'm like, oh, God. And white hat comes over and says, uh, Red wants to see you in his office. Now, Red was the guy in charge. They call him Red because he had red hair. So I'm walking over to the office to go inside there and think, oh, it's fucked up. And we're all union, so I'm not going to lose my job, but I'll probably get demoted. You don't want to be demoted because you end up like working on the trash detail, which is horrible. Because they, uh, they take the trash out, big compactor, which is in the middle of this parking lot in Texas, and all this meat is like spilled and blood, and it just smells of death out there. And you never get that smell off your stuff. You never, <laughs> never get Because the guy that does the, like, the three guys that do that, they sit on the other side of the cafeteria. How much do you get paid stink. to do that? Uh, I was like, uh, 15 bucks an hour. <sighs> so, um, 
So I'm, I'm walking in, I'm going to the office, right? And I'll, I'm walking by this glass that's right in front of the office and the curtains are always closed. So I can see my reflection. And when I see, when I look in this mirror, it's the guy tripping on acid, obviously. And because I've been crying, all this blue is like on my face. It's just like streaked out like this. And I look like straight up clown, <laughs> total clown. And I walk in there and I see all the other white hats. All the white hats are there. All the white hats from the course. There was five guys all in white, white jackets, white hats. Red sitting in his desk. Chair's been pulled out. S sit down. So I sit down. He says, you want to tell me what happened? And I just became, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. A couple of life lessons. This is one of them. Uh, and I just, I just looked at him and I go, fuck you. Fuck this job. I quit. And he looks at me and he goes, okay. And I'm like, I'm serious. I'm going to quit. And he goes, okay. So I just got up and walked out. And I'm in the cafeteria and I'm turning my knives in and I turn my, my gown in and stuff like that. And uh, I just realized, you know what? It really doesn't matter. They don't care. Nobody cares about something like that. And I had to really think about this for my, for my own health and safety. The best thing I ever decision I ever did was quitting that job. But the fact that I was on acid made it a little bit more exciting. Why, why do you think would, I mean, you're obviously an intelligent man, despite evidence to the contrary. For real. What on earth? would make someone take acid at a meat hook place. <laughs> what What were you because, thinking? Because we ran out of pot. <laughs>